Here I am, boys. Mr. O'Feathery, oh. have a seat. I've got what you're looking for right here. Thank you, sir. This is a solid platinum container. And inside be the all true, world and foremost, written by Flynn Flannerty himself, the royal and ancient rules of the game of golf. Boys, golf. This is a spiritual moment. Now you'll stand by for the reading of the rules. This is a spiritual moment. Rule number one, sand traps. A ball landing in a sand trap may be played if the player feels he is in need of the practice or enjoys that sort of thing. But no strokes other than the first one made in the bunker shall be counted against said player should the ball not come out after the first stroke. Since by this very failure of that ball to emerge, the faulty design of the bunker is deemed to be amply demonstrated, and the skill of the player should not be penalized because of a defect in construction over which he has no control. Rule number two. Winter rules. In order to spare the valuable turf of the course and protect club property, in the fairway, the player must employ small wooden pegs called tees, such as are used at the beginning of each hole. Should the stroke played from one of these tees result in the player finding himself in difficulties, he shall have the right to examine both the tee and the consistency of the ground into which it was thrust, should a defect be apparent in either. He may play the stroke over, since the purpose of the game is to eliminate all mechanical and extraneous factors so that the genuine beauty of the sport will be permitted to flourish. <laughs> a chip or nick out of the tee shall be considered a defect for all purposes, since that throws the instrument out of balance. Rule number three, the drive. Aye. Shots that curve into the rough on the right or the left either from a hook or a slice or unfortunate curvature caused by an uncontrollable mechanical phenomenon resulting from friction between the face of the club and the cover of the ball, which takes place contrary to the wishes and desires of the player and causes his ball to land in areas that no person in his right mind would want to play from. These shots shall be returned to the fairway at the point at farthest flight or roll, whichever is greatest, no penalty. Though players may collaborate on a letter to the manufacturer of the golf equipment whose faulty construction is responsible for this phenomenon. Rule number four, ball striking a tree. A ball striking a tree while in flight shall be deemed not to have struck the tree unless the player making the stroke declares that he was deliberately aiming for it. <laughs> but if the player attests in good faith that it was in no sense his intention to strike this tree, then it is obviously a piece of bad luck that has no place in a scientific game or poor planning on the part of the course architect. Either way, no penalty shall accrue to the player who is permitted to estimate the distance his ball would have gone but for the unfortunate encounter. Rule number five, a lost ball. There is no such thing as a lost ball. The ball is somewhere on the course and will be picked up eventually and pocketed by someone other than the true owner and hence not entitled to do so, becoming not a lost but a stolen ball. Uh, a player suffering a stolen ball shall be entitled to cries of sympathy and understanding from his fellow players who shall beg him confound the felony by charging himself with the loss of two strokes. Upon returning to the clubhouse, said player shall apply to the club pro for a restitution of the stolen article, since this official always has a large supply of them on hand. Rule number six. Ground under repair. In arriving, at a judgment whether or not ground is under repair for purposes of lifting a ball unpleasantly situated. Without penalty, the player may toss a coin. If it falls, the ground may be deemed under repair. However, if the player is unwilling to gamble in this manner, he may inspect the ground in question. 
if the situation or lie of the ball be such that it adds the element of hazard to the ensuing stroke, it is obviously ground in need of repair, which repairs will be made in due course when the Greens Committee can get around to it. <laughs> However, since the player cannot be expected to wait around until next Christmas, the ground shall be deemed under repair as of and from that moment. <laughs> Rule number seven, rimming the cup. A ball put it on the green that rims the cup and stays out shall be deemed to have dropped since such an occurrence shall be held contrary to the laws of gravitation which supersede the rules of golf. The same rule shall be in force for balls that pass over the hole and remain out after striking the other side since it is a well-known fact that any object attempting to maintain its position in atmosphere without something to support it must drop, and hence shall be deemed to have done so rather than dispute scientific fact. Rule number eight, a put failing to drop. A put that reaches the brink of the cup and hangs there shall be deemed to have dropped provided the player has oh. indicated by bodily Jack contortions and gestures that he was genuinely ball. desirous of this result. For since the player has indicated that this is not through any lack of interest or desire on his part, its failure to drop must then obviously be charged either to the manufacturer of the ball or the greenskeeper or both. Also, to eliminate complaints frequently to the effect that the ball stopped so close to the hole you could have blown it in, the player shall place himself behind the ball and blow. If the ball drops, yes. it shall be right, deemed to have been go. properly holed out. And that, me boys, are the royal and ancient, everlasting rules of God. Spiritual moment.